So this is a series of videos that I'm going to record to work through the different subdivision surface modeling tools within Alias that we've added in 2020. So here's a, a little bit of an agenda for this bit. We just want to introduce you to subdivision surfaces in Alias, look at how they work, what is the difference between Alias and Maya, and some of the advantages of subdivision surfaces in NURBS. So let's get right into it. We've integrated subdivision surfaces into Alias. So they work directly with the NURBS modeling surf tools within Alias as well. We're aiming this at the fast concept and detailing workflows that you use in your studios and, and product design workflows today, uh, automotive as well. And it's focused around the using NURBS and SUBDs seamlessly together. So with SUBDs, you can now trim them, project onto them. You can trim out areas and boundaries. You can blend, use fillets and surfaces and blends and you can mix them together regardless of what you're doing and so we'll show you some different things through this series of, um, of videos it has a history based approach looks just like NURBS in Alias and so we can utilize different commands and tools that we already use so if you want to pick a sub D you just pick it if you want to move it you just move it all the standard things that you do in Alias where you snap geometry modify and manipulate all these tools like modeling rendering and diagnostics just work on sub D's by default we're aiming to build and develop the highest quality sub Ds possible. And so at the moment, we want to take that surface and reuse the sub D um, wherever you might need it. So we're trying to build the best sub D surface from the start with an alias that has got controls and tools to help you modify and control it exactly and precisely. And while we're building these tools for the concept workflows in early stages, we want you to be able to reuse these surfaces downstream. So convert them to NURBS carry on using them for, throughout the process. We want to take the best workflow and practices from Maya and include them within, with an alias. We don't want to take everything from Maya because that wouldn't make sense, we're just replicating everything you've got. We want to take things that are relevant to the automotive and product design workflows to help concept modelers do what they do. Um, maybe in Maya today, which they would take advantage of using in, in alias in one tool. And we want to make this as easy to use for the alias users that currently have alias skills. So it, it just is alias within it. It just is alias, sub Ds within alias. So sub D modeling, how does that work? Um, what is it and what are the different things? Well, principally when we look at alias, alias is a NURBS modeler. It's a modeler using NURBS surfaces predominantly and creating Bezier um, within its, within its um, mathematics. Maya is a polygon modeler. Maya, even though you say it's a subdivision surface modeler, it is creating polygons as the resultant output. So how do they differ? Well, alias sub Ds are represented by NURB surfaces. So the limit surface that's created in alias is a NURB surface. In Maya, sub Ds are represented by polygons. And so they are very different in their mathematics. Um, they're still using subdivision algorithms, but they're creating different types of geometry. We can move easily between Alias and Maya by the way it's been implemented, so we can take geometry from Alias into Maya and vice versa, but they will appear similar but are technically different, and that's an important thing to mark. But we've got to remember that the implementation of what we've done in Alias is not a replacement for Maya. It's complementary. It's taking sub Ds into Alias and using them for different things, where you want to put details in. You want to add draft surfaces, add true fillets with radii and all those details that you would usually do visually by eye in Maya. So, how does that, how does that differ? What, how does that work? And how, how do we compare these two? So when we're looking at Maya, we, we often see this in Maya. So here on the left, we've got the cage. This is the representation of the unsmoothed version of the subdivision surface. And in the middle, we've got then the smooth preview of what we see, of what we're going to get. and then to the right, we've got the, the, the smoother version, uh, a different one level or two level, one, two or three level of the subdivision that you can have in mind. But those are built with polygons. And these are quad polygons that we're building. And so what we're building is actually a polygonal mesh. However, in Alias, similar thing, a couple of different variations. Here we have the box mode, which is equal to the cage. This is where we're actually shading between these controls and this, this framework to create the actual shaded mode. So we can see how lines are flowing, how things are, are built and so on. 
Then we've got the subsidy limit surfaces in the, the second image, which is showing the actual limit surfaces represented um, in, in the model. And then we see the limit surface with it con its control frame, the hulls and CVs, or edges and CVs, as you may explain in a normal um, polygon modeler. We modify that cage to modify the resulting surface. The resulting surface is the limit surface, which is actually built up of individual patches, nerves patches. When we convert that to nerves with a, a very quick transition in a matter of a fraction of a second, we can convert that to an actual nerve surface, which you see here, which is made up of degree three patches, which are continuous to each other. And this is a, a nerve surface that's been extracted for a different use, maybe handing to engineering or whatever. So let's just look at an example. If I pick these, these surfaces, this is a nerve surface, this is a sub D surface. I'm using pick CV to pick on both objects. Important, because we don't want to change all of the paradigms that we have in alias just to, to work in sub Ds. They use the same things to pick and move. So I can pick and move that surface for starters. So this is the nerves, this is the sub Ds, and they are similar but different because the number of points on this, this model are um, NURBS, and here we have sub-Ds, which has more definition and detail because of the way it's managed and built. So that's the first thing to note. Obviously, you see here that all of these patches, because we've got random colors on, all of these patches um, on the sub-D are individual patches of separate nerve surfaces. We can't interact with the substructure of that while it's a sub-D, but it's just worth noting and understanding that. There are a few other things. So if I go into pick CV and I select on this CV here, and then I shift select with my middle mouse button, that picks that row of CVs in between those two points because that's just alias. And if we go to our selection options, middle mouse button is add. So we've picked this point and we've added to it down this in this direction. So we can apply the same thing to the sub D model, pick these points and pick these this line. Now that's important because people, when they're using a subdivision surface modeler, want to pick rows or selections of edges and CVs. This works and applies the same for edges. So I can move that up. So let's just do the same with edges. Um, I can go in here and pick this row, middle mouse select, and I can pick a select row of CVs, um, sorry, of edges in this case, and move those and modify them. Something we then have is a selection, face selection. So I can go into a sub D and pick a face. This is a standard thing in a subdivision world that we can pick and move that. But because of the way this is working in Alias, we've added that capability to the nerves world as well. So I can now pick a face. What is a face in the nerves world? Well, it's four CV points. I can now modify that and change that as well. So while we're adding things in sub Ds, we're getting some things for free in the sub D world. So let's go in and have a look at box mode. Box mode, I've got some transparency on here, so I can change the transparency. And what this is giving us is the shading between all of the, the, the control cage, in this case in the sub D, but it's the hulls and CVs in this case. And I think it's some pe thing people have been asking for in the nerves world, but we now can see how the flow and lines work within this model. Let's go back to the shaded mode. So when we're in diagnostic shading, because this are separate surfaces, we can actually pick them and we can delete them. Because it's a subdivision surface model, it automatically smooths it. So, so sometimes you don't want that. Control Z to undo, so undo in everything in uh, sub Ds as well. And this time I'm going to pick it and I'm going to make it invisible. So now that I've made that invisible, we've got a hole, but it's a precise hole with edges. I can go in and I can use my draft tool build a draft off that and I've now built a nerve surface draft surface on off the subdiv or subdivision model I can pick those points on the subdivision model and that draft will update the calculation isn't so much so we don't need to spend history but in the future series of these these videos we'll explain and look through that in more detail so that's one thing however if we now zoom in a little bit further and this time I change for a boundary surface, a square surface. I can build off this, this surface with G2 curvature in all directions. I've got a split control on, and I can put in 
a degree 3 um, by 3 um, square. Now because it's a square, it's kind of going to mimic a little bit the, the subdivision surface. So I can pick here um, this subdiv control, but just make, make sure. Let's turn off the controls there. Pick that CV, modify it, and you'll see that the NURB surface will follow the subdivision surface. So you can just see how this is working as a, a true hybrid modeling workflow. Let's get rid of that patch, bring back the subdivision surface. So when you're working with subds, you probably need to have a layer potentially where you're hiding some of the subds because it gives you a new unique capability to build off these edges. There is no tool to build off the mid -term part of an edge at the moment, but you can draft off an edge um, when you do it in this way. So you can achieve the results you want, but maybe not in the way you might have done before. If I now were looking at the sub D, I can go in and I can put on my curvature ramp. Um, now I've put on the curvature scale, I can analyze this with the tools within angular sections, um, all the curvature analysis tools. But what I can do as well is I can go in and highlight um, the actual principal max value. Now as I move the mouse, the value will change because it's an underlying nerve surface. This is the sub D again, remember, and I can analyze it for all the curvature and radius values. Look for certain points and, and values that I need to control for tooling or whatever it might be. So we've now had a look at and introduced subdivision surfaces in Alias and how you can work with subdivision surfaces while working in Alias. We've also looked at the differences between subdivision surfaces with Alias and Maya and how they are predominantly different between, between nerves and polygons. And we've actually had a look, a practical look at how they work in the interface and how you can work. So the next chapter we'll be looking at is um, looking forward to you know, building your first model. How might you start to approach building your first model and using some of the subdivision surfacing tools within Alias in combination with other tools in the